It's the last day of school. The school bell rings for the last time this week. You decide you want to go on how to go to your locker, grabbing everything you need out. You hear crying near the end of the hallway. Before you can open your locker, you decide to go and see what's wrong. Walking, you can see as you get closer, you realize it's your school bully. You try to get her attention, but she doesn't hear you. So you decide to walk up to her and try to help her. Being courageous and bold, you tap her shoulder for whatever reason. Who are you? I, I don't want to talk right now. No, I, I don't want to talk. Go away. Of course you won't leave. You're only stubborn. Why would you want to know? Why would you want to know what's wrong just to make fun of me? As if anyone would want to talk to me. I always scare people away. What do you mean you want to get straight to the point? <sighs> Whatever. It's always people like you. People like you who will hurt me. But you're the only one who's been there for me. Fine. But you tell no one, or I'm gonna... I'm gonna do something. You know, if you really did care about me, you'd leave me alone. But... whatever. You know how it's the last day of school and everything. I... I don't know what to do anymore. My grades have been going terrible. I've done nothing but make enemies because I know nothing better. I have no idea how to make these things you call friends. People who want to stick around. No offense, but you just have no one else to go to. That's why you're bothering me. You're sitting here all alone. It's the last day of school. You should be out with some friends or something. You shouldn't still be here. I got fired from my job. My parents are fucking kicking me out. On top of that, I can't afford anything anymore. I've spent a month, oh, a month looking for a job by now. No one wants to take me. I'm a certified delinquent. I do nothing but beat people up. I'm better off going to go sit there and go to a daycare and say, Hey, you want to hire me? You know you can't help with this. As much as you want to. This entire thing is out of my hands. And until I figure out what... You can't. There's no way. It's the last day of school. Unless I decide to take up summer school classes, which I can't afford. You spoiled brat. Pay for them for me? What are you talking about? I don't want to owe your ass up the asshole, okay? I always make you do everything for me. I make you do my work. I make you clean my shoes. And now you're ever telling me you want to help me? You're the most backwards person I've ever met.
None of this makes any sense. You... You want to help me? This must be some joke. If I really wanted to, I could just go back to my parents' place. Nothing stopping me from doing that except for the constant arguing and the beating and the fighting. But nothing is bad. At least I have a really bad apartment with a really terrible mattress. I can sleep on that, at least it's something. But I don't want to believe your little story. I don't want to believe that someone's going to help me. Because every fucking time I do. Every time I believe someone's going to help me. They stab me in the back. As hard as they can. And I have no doubt you're going to do the same thing. That's the bell. That's the bell to leave. Just go. I can find my own way. Oh, what are you doing with my stuff? No. You don't have to do that. It's fine. I can figure it out on my own. Please. What? Your dorm? You know I can't go there. No. <laughs> Before she knew it, you picked her up. You held her head up with your left arm, and her legs up with your right. As if you were holding a wounded friend in your arms for a dramatic shot in a movie. Why are you holding me? Uh, for someone so weak, you're pretty strong, you know that. It's really fucking annoying. What did you let me do, just beat you down all these years? I don't even know what you are. Whatever. I... I hate this. I hate you. I don't want to go to some fucking dorm. They wouldn't even let me in in the first place. Yeah. What? You want me to spend the night at your place? You're fucking insane! I can find somewhere to go. I can go back to my parents. I don't need you to baby me. You're driving me fucking crazy. Why? Why must you do this? And then, you didn't speak back to her. You took her to your car. You opened the door, and sat her in. All of this in silence. And getting in your car, you drove to your dorm. You packed a few things, telling her not to get out of the car. You came back to the car, sat in the car, and drove. He drove for a while. A very long time. Eventually, the car stopped. And it was the most beautiful place. 
most beautiful place they'd ever seen. Where, where are we? Where did you take me? You better tell me. In your parents' vacation home? It's not even that far. Multiple. A fucking brat. Ugh. What am I supposed to do about clothes and food? I told you. I need to be out there looking for a job. I need to be out there learning, doing something. Suddenly, you tell her to grab onto your hand as you open her car door. In silence, once more, you say nothing. You take her inside and sit her down. You quickly go to the still running kitchen and get her a cup of water. Are you just not gonna say anything to me? You're just gonna make me wait? That's it, I don't want to fucking be here. I want to go away. I shouldn't even be around you. Do you know how badly I treated you? You don't care about that. I swear you must be fucking insane. I don't want your help. She keeps on insisting that she didn't want your help. And that all of this is crazy. But suddenly she starts to break down in tears. Unable to stop. She starts to scream to herself on why, why she's going through all of this. She doesn't understand. And she doesn't understand why you're being so nice to her. Why? Why? I can't. I... I don't understand. Why? Whether I stay with you or not, this isn't my place. I still have to find somewhere, and I still have to make a way for me. So unless you know what I'm supposed to do. I have no clothes. I have no food. Don't spoil me. Reaching into the bag you packed, he went and grabbed her some clothes and handed it to her, saying that she could have them, and everything in the bag was hers. You have to be out of your mind. I said I won't take any handouts, didn't I? Still nothing. Why am I even trying? I have nowhere to go. No one will take me. I might as well just stay. Where am I supposed to change into these stupid clothes? You point for her to go to the bedroom. Which is... The only bed in the house. The only room in the house. Alright. She gets changed in the room. 
you notice she's still crying, and you decide to tell her that it's okay to cry and you won't think less of her. Suddenly she broke down to the floor once more, and kept crying. And she tells you the main reason why she's been crying all this time. What got her here. Basically her whole life story. The reason I kept crying is because of what I've been doing. How my parents have been acting. How I act towards you. That's because of how you act towards me and how you react when I push you around. You never fight back, yet you're so strong. You don't do anything to defend yourself. And now I'm here being treated like a fucking princess. The one I hurt the most. You act like I haven't done anything bad to you. And I feel terrible. You never deserved all those things I did to you, and yet you still helped me. I was nothing but the worst to you, and you didn't even hesitate to help me. I don't deserve this. Why do you help me? You get up after she stops yelling and you walk towards the bed and you sit on the ground with your back facing the bedside. You lay your head down and tell Skylar to give you her hand. After a few seconds, she lets you hold her hand. And you let her know how much she means to you, which is why you helped her. She realizes what you're about to do and closes her eyes. After you kiss her, you tell her your feelings and she starts to cry again. I don't deserve your love. I don't deserve anyone. I don't even think I'm ready for this. You kiss her once more and let her settle down. I'd love to get to know you more. That's really it. If you'd like to help me with school, I wouldn't think you're a complete bother for it. Thank you. You and I realize how much the other's blushing. Somewhat you walk out of the room and I drift off to sleep. When I fall asleep, you go back to the beanbag and just relax while reading a book. After a few minutes, you decide to lay in bed with her, and you slowly drift off to sleep. Thank you guys. I hope you guys are having an amazing day, an amazing night, or an amazing afternoon. Have a great anything, and I'll see you later, guys. Stay wild, stay amazing, and stay happy. After you and Skylar drifted off to sleep, around an hour later, you're woken up by noises. When you open your eyes, you see she's shaking. 
You notice she's covered up by the blanket. She's having a nightmare. There's no way she was cold. No. No. Please. No. Don't hurt them. Please, stop. Please. You softly but quickly wake her up. Try to comfort her. You grab her hand so she can feel safe. Slowly she remembers how she got to where she is now. I... I thought they were you. And you tell her she was having a nightmare and that you're there. You start smiling and talking with her, reminding her that you're there. Thank, thank you. Soon enough, she fell back asleep, with your hand caressing her cheek. You drift off to sleep again, and you wake up early in the morning. What? Where? Oh. Wait, that wasn't a dream? What? You don't have to order me breakfast. But I don't want to use you. I can't keep abusing your kindness. Oh, yeah. I guess we had that moment yesterday. A couple? Uh, geez, what did I get myself into? Fine. You can order me some breakfast. Just get me scrambled eggs. Bacon and orange juice. After you place the order, you tell Skylar she can stay as long as she needs. You also tell her if you want to go somewhere, just ask. R really I guess we can go to a mall, if you want. Or somewhere. But I don't really have any money. How can I even pay for things? I- it's fine. Wait, no! You can't just give me money, are you stupid? Come on! Fine. Just... I won't go getting carried away with your money. I can't go outside wearing this. I don't even know what I look like right now. Right before you're about to spoil her with a compliment, you hear the doorbell. You get the breakfast from the door, and when you come back you find her holding onto your hoodie from yesterday. Nearly falling back asleep. You nudge her and she wakes up. She realizes what you're seeing her do, and she gets shocked and starts blushing. Uh, I wasn't... I, I, it's not what it... Uh, just forget about it, okay? Is, is that my food? It is? Can I... can I have it, please? You set her food on the nightstand that's next to the side of the bed. You pull out a tray and place the food. Thank you so much. Ah, oh, this is so good. I'm not eating too fast, I'm just hungry. Well, where are we going, did you decide yet? Really, the mall? I was just saying that as a joke. As if you'd really want to take me there. Wait. You will? You're joking. Fine, I'll go. Just let me brush my teeth and change into something. Uh. As she goes to get ready, you realize you should be getting ready yourself. You get dressed, and you wait for Skylar. Alright, I'm ready, but my hair is still messy. 
Why are you blushing? Cute? Adorable? What kind of words are those? Not one for somebody like me. Shut up. You go to the mirror in your room, and you open a little cabinet. You pull out a little hairbrush and spray bottle. What do you have that for? My hair? <sighs> I can do it myself. Ugh. <sighs> Whatever. You're not a complete screw-up at it. You really had that many girls try to get in here, right? That's probably how you're so good. Hmm. I knew you were smart. I knew you were good. And I still treated you like that. I... I didn't say anything. Just hurry up with my hair. Alright, are we ready to go? Alright, let's go. You and Skylar head out and drive to the mall. Before even five minutes had passed, you heard straw slurping noises. What? I just really like my orange juice, don't judge me. On the way to the mall, you asked Skylar if there's anything she wanted to buy. Could probably use some shampoo or some soap, either one. A decent pillow. Not to say you don't have any. I don't think there's any more. What? You let me live with you? That's really sudden. I don't know if I want to choose to live with you right now. I appreciate all you've done for me, but... I shouldn't be just using you like this. It, it feels like I'm using you. I don't mean to say that I'm using you, it's just... I don't know if I should be here with you, you know? Not too long anyway. I don't want to overstay my welcome or anything like that. I... I just... You ask Skylar a question and interrupt her. You want to ask me something important? Whatever. What do you mean by relationship level? Oh, you mean, like, are we friends or best friends or whatever those little girls say? Well, 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 that's a question I didn't think I'd have to answer right now, but I guess we both somewhat have a liking to each other. So I... I guess we'd be considered dating. You both blushed. It was mostly silent. When you finally arrive, you help her out of the car. Thank you. You and Skylar start working towards the mall entrance. That's when you notice two guys staring at Skylar as you enter the mall. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm feeling okay. Come on. You said you wanted to buy me something, but promise me you'll stop. I don't want you to overdo it. Thank you. Now, let's go somewhere. Where do you want to go? You tell Skylar you want to go to a clothing store. You had her ended up choosing five t-shirts and two pairs of comfy pants. Two pairs of shorts and the undergarments and a pair of really short shorts for whatever reason. After you bought the clothes, you head back into the mall. I can't believe I let you buy all that for me. You got so flustered, what was all that all about? You're supposed to be a man, come on. 
As you both are walking to the bathing section of the mall, you see those two guys again that were staring at Skylar. You start to get a little worried for Skylar, so you pull her a little closer to you. Why did you do that? Well, I know you want me close, but I was like an inch away from you. Did you want to say something? Okay, then. Look, there's the body care section. You both arrive at the body care section of the mall. Oh my gosh, look at how many different scents there are. Oh, this one smells like vanilla. Yes, it does smell good, but it's way too strong. Check this one out. Oh my god, it says you should smell like a tropical breeze with this one. Is something wrong? I just really enjoy my scents. Please don't criticize me for it. If you do, I'll hurt you. Alright. Skylar ended up smelling most of the shampoos. You notice that one that has your favorite scent. You pick it up, smell it, and then get Skylar's opinion. Oh, this one? It's just strawberry banana. Well, seems simple, though. Oh, that one smelled amazing. Do you like this one? You think it smells great, too? Then it's settled. I've chosen strawberry banana centered shampoo. Oh, I almost forgot. I need some body wash, too. They have strawberry banana scented body wash, too? It's labeled as one of the best sellers, too. Well, I guess I'll choose that one. You keep thinking back to those two guys who were staring at Skylar. You decide to get something to defend her in case they tried to do something. Then you realize Skylar hasn't said anything about them, so maybe she doesn't even know they're staring. Or maybe she doesn't even know they exist. What? You want to get some of those body shampoo bottle holders or something? What are they for? For decoration. Oh, come on. I guess I do look kind of cute, but I'm made of glass. Just be careful. Oh, wait. The gloss is kind of thick. Mm. It would just make a loud noise, I guess. Look. They even put up a video showing them drop it. That's crazy. Yeah, you're gonna buy that many? Fine. After you finish buying the shampoo, body wash, and the glass shampoo bottle holders, you both head over to the mattresses to get her a pillow. As you continue walking, you see those guys still staring. You grab her hand and make sure she doesn't get pulled away. Why are you holding my hand so tight? I'm not scared. Are you scared? Oh, don't worry. I'll protect you. You're wondering if those guys even know you're next to Skylar. You both arrive there, getting her a pillow. I think we should head home after this pillow. I just want to lay down in bed. With you, if that's not a problem. I'm serious. I'm also a little hungry, but I don't want to use you for food again. Okay, okay, I'll stop being like that, but I'm paying you back some time. And you won't stop me. You both arrive and find the pillows. Are we allowed to sit down on the mattresses? <laughs> oh, thanks for asking. Honey. Uh, uh yeah... I did call you, honey. Did you like it? I saw your face blush. You can't hide it from me. Uh, I knew it. I knew you liked it. Not that it matters. After you pay for the pillow, you both start walking towards the car. You don't see those two guys anywhere in the mall as you walk back. But you keep your guard up. You remember you had bought shampoo bottle holders, and you realize... You won't be able to pull them out quickly without fumbling. You decide to have Skylar haul the pillow and the clothes and you holding the bathing items. Along with the holders, you both then continue to walk out and back to your car. You know, you're a really cool guy. I had fun. You bought me breakfast and did a lot for me. 
You try not to get too emotional because you can't let your guard down. You know, I realize you're really stubborn, but I'm glad you're stubborn. I'm glad it's you who found me. You tell Skylar she means a lot to you, but you cut it short because you just saw those two guys poking their heads out to see if you're both close. Neovan decided to pull out the glass, bottle holders, and prepare for possible violence. You tell Skylar to put everything on the ground and stay close to you. Then you both walk out the mall's doors. And I can't wait to be home with you. And then I'm gonna be... The two guys popped out, just like you predicted. But then you saw one of the guys reach their arm towards Skylar's waist. And this raised both your protect and attack nearly through the roof. What? Who are you people? You saw one of the guys put his hands on Skylar's waist and that made you snap. Without thinking, you violently threw the holders at the head of one of the guys who were touching Skylar's waist. With somehow pinpoint accuracy, causing it to make a very painful, audible ding. But the glass holder didn't break, as expected. But the waist holder lost its grip of Skylar, allowing her to push him away. When you saw that Skylar had gotten afraid, you saw her begin to tear up from so much happening. This made you lose focus for a second. And you got pushed down by what the other guy. And this guy started continuously punching you near the right side of your chest. No! No! Stop! Stop it! Get off of him! This was almost exactly the nightmare she had. Except she was helplessly standing there. Realizing she could move. Which is something she wasn't able to do in her nightmare. She knew she could do something. And she will do something. She grabs the glass holder that you threw at the other guy who is currently on the ground stumbling to get up. And runs towards the guy punching you. Get away from- He sweeps her leg before she can land a hit. She falls to the ground and looks up. Now it was just like her nightmare. Stop it! Don't hurt him! Once you saw Skylar fall onto the ground, you somehow snapped even harder than before. This made you very protective of Skylar. Out of pure adrenaline and anger, you kicked the guy who kept punching you in the- This caused him to lose balance. You grabbed the glass holder that Skylar dropped, and you held it with the longer but thicker side of the bottle on the receiver end. You slapped the guy who punched you to distract him, and you slammed the glass bottom down on his head so that it broke the bottle and knocked the guy unconscious. But he isn't dead, so you shouldn't get arrested, especially since there are cameras that saw it all. I I'm sorry. I I'm sorry. You saw Skylar crying and shaking intensely. You saw a single drop of blood from Skylar's arm. You picked up the other glass holder from the ground and you threw it at his head. You threw it way more violently than the first time. It shattered everywhere. Both guys were still unconscious. You start to yell at their unconscious bodies. But all Skylar hears is your voice. She doesn't know what you're actually saying. You quickly rushed over to Skylar, but slowly but carefully picked her up. She was still very scared, but she could still get words out. They were shaky. It was my fault. I, I caused this. I caused this. You tell Skylar there's no way this is her fault, and you make that clear to her. You carry her to the car and put her in the passenger seat. You get your phone on and call the police and tell them what happened. You tell the police where you are along with your car's location so they know where you're laying down. And you bring them to the medic. You ask if anyone was injured, you tell them Skylar's legs were sweeped and she fell to the ground. You talk about how the guy continuously punched your stomach and also other places, and what you did to the two guys. You get in your back in your car and you slowly lose some of your adrenaline. Skylar can finally speak clear. Please don't be mad at me. I couldn't stop him. I don't want you to leave me. You tell Skylar that all that matters right now is that she's okay. I'm sorry you got hurt. It's okay. Right? I'm sorry. You better promise me you'll take me home and get me some pizza and we'll cuddle and do all that stupid stuff. What is it? You'll have to tell me later. I think I see the police lights. The police arrive. They do their thing and Skylar was treated. 
They got arrested. And she was scared a little bit, but you calmed her down. And the police help you and Skylar get settled. I think you should probably rest. They said you shouldn't move so much. I'll get everything for you. You need to stay still. Let your injury heal. Now give me your phone. I'll call the pizza. She climbs on the couch, but then she remembers something. Honey, do you remember what you yelled at those two guys? You said you'd tell me. You and Skylar open the notes up on your phone so you can type what you yelled earlier. Alright. You hand Skylar the phone back and ask her to read it because it was still kind of embarrassing. You idiots are some of the worst people ever, you know that? You tried to do a horrible mess up this thing to this amazing and beautiful girl and now guess what you got from that? The world's worst headaches with the added bonus of broken glass jammed into your head. So it was worth. You sad, pathetic, worthless sacks of useless human trash. Uh, honey, you really yelled this. But you broke glass? My god, but that was a- They were so strong. How stressed were you to do that? You snapped? Oh god. You really care about me that much. She decides to let you cuddle her. Close your eyes. I'm gonna repay you. Skylar looks through the bags next to the couch for her shorts, a shirt and t-shirt, and a pillow of all of what she paid for. She finds those things, moves it to the side, and changes her clothes while out of sight. Keep your eyes closed or I'll poke you. Lift your head up. Skylar places the pillow under your head. Okay, lay your head down. How and why is the couch big enough to have two people lay next to each other? Just forget I asked that. Your eyes better be closed. Once Skylar settled on the couch, she grabs your arm and lays her head on it. You can open your eyes. When you open your eyes, you see Skylar is laying down. She's wearing short shorts and one of the t-shirts she got from the mall. Can you read what my shirt says? That's right, it says, I'm your buddy here. You can cuddle me as long as you want to. You immediately start cuddling. And you hold her tightly. A few minutes pass and you both fall asleep. The pizza's here. You change the TV channel while you eat. After you both finish eating, you remember that your parents are supposed to be returning here in two days around. And you tell her about it. What? But they don't even know me. They'll kick me out. You promise Skylar she will not be kicked out. I trust you. Oh, and also, I want to move in with you. You hug Skylar tightly and keep holding her for a while. Hey, can we lay here for the rest of the day? Thank you. Good night. I love you. After you and Skylar slept in for pretty much the entire next day, your mother came to visit you while she was in town. You totally forgot she had a house key. The door opens and the first thing she sees is Skylar and you on the same couch. Hi? That's all you're gonna say? Mm -hmm. Hello? What's going on here? No, it is mine. You better explain who she is and why she's here right this instant or you're grounded. You tell Skylar to go back to sleep as to not face the wrath of your mother. Whatever you say, honey. Honey? What do you mean, honey? This... 
This is your girlfriend? Don't give me that attitude. And why does she have a cut? What did you do to her? You explain everything that happened while she was on another one of her business trips. So you helped someone from your school that wasn't doing okay physically or mentally? Hmm. That's the boy I knew and raised. How did you even meet her? She's kind of your what? Your... She's your bully? Your mother starts to get angry again. You better not have threatened to blackmail her. You tell your mother that Skylar's going to live here with you. Now wait just a second. Just because she's your girlfriend doesn't mean you get to choose whatever she does. First off, you're probably going to force her to love you. And second, she's not living here. Skylar wakes up from the yelling, and she hears your mother say that Skylar is not living here. Listen here, Missy. I actually want to stay here. Your son went through great lengths to ensure my safety. He literally put himself in harm's way in order to keep me safe. He was the one who came to me when I was crying in the school hallway. He's my protector. He's the only person I have. So either you let me live here, or something will go down. How dare you speak to me like that? As if my son wouldn't like you. He never even ch Wait, what do you mean he put himself in harm's way? He literally got a cracked rib from protecting me. How have you not noticed a lump on his shirt? That's from the bandage. Sweetie, did you really even- did you- did you get hurt? How did that happen? Oh, I'll tell you. The two pervs tried touching me and your son beat the crap out of them. And he came out with a cracked rib. Do you even know how much your son loves me? So what if he loves you a lot? That won't stop me from kicking you out. So you want to take away the person that brings him happiness. After thinking for a few seconds, your mother makes her choice. Fine. You can live here. But on one condition. What? You will clean up all the messes made, or I will have you kicked out. Understand? Just because you're my boyfriend's mother does not mean you can order me around. You feel Skylar start to shake a little bit due to the situation. Excuse me? Who do you think you're talking to? Talking to me like that? I will not be or- You snap your fingers at your mother and point directly to the door with no words. And what do you think gives you the power to be like that towards me? You're still pointing and your mother is visibly angry at you. You decide that your mother needs to leave the house. You gonna answer? You continue to point towards the door with a firm voice and say, Leave. Now. Whenever! You were so grounded! Your mother storms outside, slams the door behind her, and drives away. After your mother leaves, Skylar begins to tear up. I I'm fine. It's just your mother doesn't even like me after seeing me for the first time. She acted a lot like my mother, and I don't like my mother. Thank you. I don't know what I'd do without you. You and Skylar fall back asleep, and then sometime during the evening, your mother comes back to the house. After she gets back in the house, she immediately wakes up you and Skylar. Who? Oh. Skylar realizes it's your mother again. Get up and leave, both of you. Uh, no, we're not leaving this house. I already told everything to his father, and he wants both of you out. We're not. 
And you stop Skylar from speaking and explain to her what you know your mother never explains the full story. You tell your mom you leave after you get a verbal confirmation from your father. Well, what are you waiting for? Call him so you can both get out of here. You call your father and ask him what your mother told him. He tells you he knows about the injuries and that's it. You explain the full story to your father, which then leads you to having your father on your side. Father calls mother, telling her to leave you guys alone. Fine, but this is all your fault. So don't come crying to me when she leaves with your money. Your mother leaves the house and slams the door again. Yes. Yes, I'm okay. You know I don't want you for your money, right? Good. No, let's get back to relaxing. You and Skylar go back to sleeping for the rest of the day. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye. As you and Skylar calm down from the situation, you realize she needs to have a way to provide for herself if things ever go south. You decide to help her get a job. For all the listeners, this will never happen. What? Who would want to hire me? Yes, I've already tried those places. I've applied to everywhere that I would want to work. You ask Skylar if she's checked out every place near the house. Well, no. But there are some I don't know how to do. You suggest a new maid cafe that just opened. What? Well, I... Uh, I consider trying it. Uh, fine. I guess I can try applying there. You and Skylar both go over and go take a look at the new cafe. Skylar meets the manager and inquires about working there. The manager gives Skylar the paperwork, as she'd be more than happy to go ahead and hire her on. Hey, it says they need a picture of me. Can you help me out with that? You take out your phone, get the camera running, and help Skylar get ready for the photo. How do I look? I just put some clothes of yours on so I might not look the best. You start blushing as you look at Skylar. Stop blushing. Just take the picture already, damn it. After you take the picture, you attach it to the paperwork. You were told you had to wait for a response, so you go back and you wait. Well, I guess we just wait, huh? What should we do now? Should we try baking? Do you think so? Um... My favorite kind of cookies. Chocolate chip. Those are my favorite. You and Skylar agree you're gonna make chocolate chip cookies. You head to the kitchen, you get the ingredients and baking tools out to make the chocolate chip cookies she loves so much. Alrighty. L let's do this. What do we need to put the oven on? I'm sorry, I've never really baked before. My parents didn't really care much and I didn't have anyone else to bake with. How do I work this? You guide Skylar's hand, so that way she can turn the oven to 350. Uh, oh, okay. Thank you. And these are the dry ingredients, so they get mixed first, right? Oh, and you're mixing the wet ones? Oh, okay. M wait, what do I do with that? I'm supposed to mix them together? Oh, oh okay. <sighs> there, they're mixed. You can mix the rest. I'll add the chocolate chips in, okay? You mix the 
ingredients together, and you end up with chocolate chip cookie dough. And we scoop them into little... Little spears? Oh, wow. I'm sorry. This is just... I've never really done it before. He helps Skylar scoop it up into little balls. And after placing the dough on the baking sheets, you place them in the oven and set the time for 10 minutes. While you and Skylar wait, you realize that if she gets the job, then you're going to need measurements for her outfit. Huh? Measure me for what? My, my outfit? Skylar immediately forgets about applying for a maid cafe. Instead, she thinks that you're getting her a fancy dress because you want to take her on a really nice date later. Which is the wrong idea. Uh, um, you can do that. You get out of tape measure and you start to measure Skylar's measurements. Oh, honey, why are you blushing? Oh, that measurement, don't worry. I can do that one myself. You order a maid's outfit according to Skylar's measurements with the fastest shipping possible. Uh, okay, honey. You've got my measurements now, so... Let's go back to the cookies before they burn. The timer starts to go off. You can take the cookies out of the oven and let them cool off. Wow, they smell really good. I can't wait to eat them. Oh, and the milk. I almost forgot the milk. You get two glasses out of your cupboard, and you get the milk out of the fridge. You pour some milk into the two glasses and put the milk back. Thank you. After waiting for more minutes, you take a few of the cookies and two of the glasses of milk over to Skylar, who moved over to the couch and sat them down. Yay! I'm actually really excited. I love cookies so much I haven't had them in so long. Come on, I want to try them with some milk. Gimme! You and Skylar both dip the cookies into the milk and take a bite. They're amazing. Oh my! These taste incredible. You did really well with these. Oh, stop. I only stirred some of the ingredients. I hardly helped. Skylar gets a notification on her computer. Skylar opens it and reads it. It's from the maid cafe. They really want to hire me. Skylar calls the number attached in the reply and she hangs up with an excited look on her face. I got the job. Thank you. But it's pretty late. We should go to sleep now. I don't want to stay up. You want me to come in tomorrow? As you both lay down, you hold Skylar's hand and fall asleep. You wake up the next morning to a doorbell, followed by the sound of a truck driving away. You stay put as not wake Skylar up. A few minutes later, Skylar wakes up. I... Oh, how was your sleep? That's good. So do you want to do anything today? There's a package at the front door. Okay, you can get up then. As you get out of bed, Skylar grabs into the pillow and hugs it tightly, nearly falls back asleep. Once you get the package from your front door, you realize it's 100% Skylar's outfit. You go back to Skylar and tell her what came. My outfit? Already? Mm, do I get to do another photo shoot? Mm, mm, then what are you waiting for? Help me get ready. After getting Skylar mostly ready, get her hairbrush so you can brush her hair. You're gonna brush my hair? I love it when you do. After you brush Skylar's hair, you bring Skylar and the package to the bathroom. You leave the bathroom so Skylar can change. Oh, why did you get me a... Oh, oh. Right. After a few minutes, Skylar finishes changing. Okay, I... I'm done changing. You better not make fun of me when you see me or I'm gonna hurt you. Skylar opens the door and she comes out in a maid outfit. Her hair goes nicely with the maid outfit. She's standing there with shaky legs while she holds her hands tightly. She doesn't look up when she comes out. You're blushing even more than you ever thought you could. Don't make fun of me or I'll bite you. What? I don't look cute. Don't call me that. Only I can mess with you like that. Let's just get this photo shoot over with. But I don't want to look up and embarrassed. Uh, okay, fine. Give me one second. 
Skylar finally looks up and she's beat red. Her eyes meet yours and she covers her face with her hands. I, I know, just give me a minute. After Skylar finally moves her hands, you start the photo shoot. After you finish, you remind Skylar that she might also want to have to call people sir when she's working at the cafe. Uh, oh, uh, I understand. Uh, sir, of all things, whatever. I'm taking this off and I'm laying back down. You and Skylar proceed to lay down. The morning after the maid outfit arrived, Skylar starts to get ready for her first day at the maid cafe. Hey, honey, I got myself ready for my job. Do you think you can drive me down there, please? Thank you so much. You and Skylar get in the car. You drive her to the maid cafe. Once you arrive, you notice a guy staring at Skylar in all the wrong places. That's alright. I'll see you later. Don't worry about messing me up, I'm used to not breaking character. Once Skylar gets in the maid cafe, you glare at the guy who was staring at Skylar, giving him a warning not to touch her. After that, you drive back home and sleep until you have to pick up Skylar. When the time comes, you drive back to the maid cafe to pick her up. Hey, honey, how was your day? That's good. My day was alright. Everyone was really nice to me while I was working. Except for this one dude who was too handsy it made me uncomfortable. Well, yeah. I tried to tell him to stop, but then my boss would be mad. Because I'm not allowed to break character, remember? Oh. And... Yeah, my voice, I'm sorry. Well... I can't sound so tough anymore. I'm trying to mm, practice this thing, you know? I hope it sounds alright and it's not too much. I'm glad. Wait, there's one more thing. That guy tried to touch my face. After hearing this, you start to drive Skylar back home. Once you both get home, you both get ready for bed. Good night. The next day. You and Skylar wake up after sleeping. You decide you both want to walk somewhere near the house. I get to spend all your time with you. But... Why is sports center of all places? You have sports equipment you need to return? Since when did you get the sports equipment? Oh, you borrowed it from the sports center. Wait, when did you ever play sports? Oh... Something your parents wanted you to try? Well, I'm glad you didn't say yes to them because now I get to spend my time with you. Once you and Skylar get ready to head outside, you grab the bag of sports equipment and start walking outside. Honey, you sure you don't need help carrying any of that? I want to help a little. You tell Skylar she can carry the baseball bat. Thank you. Now let's head off to the sports center. As you and Skylar start walking, you notice the guy from yesterday is somewhat following you. You tell Skylar to speed up a little. Alright, alright, I'll go faster. So, is there any reason you chose the sports center? You thought I wanted to play a sport? Well, I did, when I was a kid. Yeah, baseball. Really? You'll play baseball with me? While you and Skylar walked to the sports center, the man that was staring at Skylar yesterday speeds up his pace to get closer. N yeah I see him. Don't worry, I got this. The man very loudly runs up behind Skylar and tries to grab her. Skylar pushes him down on the ground with a bat. Hey, pervert. You know what sound a baseball bat makes when it hits someone's head? Skylar lifts the baseball bat over her head. 
and sounds something like this. Skylar slams the bat down on the guy's head. Dunk! <laughs> At least that's what my version sounds like. Also, I want you to remember that noise the next time you try doing something like that again. Come on, honey, let's go. Warning, please don't do that. After Skylar slammed the perfect's head in, you both continued walking to the sports center. After about ten minutes of walking, you both finally arrived at the sports center. Well, this place is way bigger than I imagined. I guess they need a lot of room for a baseball field. Come on, honey. Let's go to the baseball arena. I want to hit more things with the bat. You and Skylar walk down to the baseball stadium, and you get out the baseball bat and the ball you bought at the SC. Alright, honey, you know how to throw the ball, right? Good. Now let's do this. You and Skylar begin to play 1v1 baseball, and at the end, you end up losing and Skylar wins by 5 points. <laughs> I won in your face. Now, let's go home and go to bed. And that's exactly what you do. Have a great day, guys, and thank you so much for listening to my ASMR. Bye-bye. The next day, you and Skylar are laying on the couch in the living room with the TV on. Skylar looks like she's stuck on a thought inside her head. You go ahead and ask Skylar what she's thinking about. Oh, it's nothing. It's just... I'm so surprised I beat you yesterday. I thought you would have won. Why? You're obviously a runner. Because just look at how... I mean... I don't know, I'm just a little surprised. That's all. Uh, anyway... Did you want to do anything today? No, no, no. Don't worry. I only have to work Sunday, Wednesday, and Saturday. And today's Friday, you silly. You ask Skylar if she's ever played any kind of games in her free time. Well, I've only ever played one game. That was all the way back to when we first met at the same school, all the way to when the summer break started. <laughs> oh, I am. Um, I called it messing with you. I didn't have a good name for it. I know you probably didn't think it was a game, but I thought it was really fun. <laughs> you wanna know why I, uh, thought it was fun? You slowly nod your head yes. Well, I, I, um, <laughs> sorry. I thought it was cute. More specifically, I thought your reactions were cute. You start blushing a little as Skylar explains more. Well, your reactions were always so nice when I did certain things. Like, remember that one time in third grade when I fell over at the playground? Yeah, that one. You came running to me and you helped me up. And once I was up, I said thank you. <laughs> I still remember you stood there for a good two minutes before saying anything. There was also this one time in seventh grade when we had a really big project and we had to write at least like one page summary for each subject we learned that year. I remember you tore a piece out of my notebook. You didn't know it was mine. <laughs> well, why did you think I looked extremely mad when I walked up to you and the school day was over and the project was due the next day? You shrug your shoulders at Skylar. You thought it was because she wanted food. No, silly. That's not why I came running up to you because you tore out my most important notes. But the cute thing was, when I kept walking closer to you, you backed yourself into a corner. And once I was right in front of you, I could see your face was really red. You asked Skylar why she didn't back away. 
Well, I thought it was nice being close to you like that, and anyways, the next thing you did was even better. I remember you handing me a note, telling me to read it. Right there, right then. You tell Skylar that you're sorry you tore a piece of paper from her notebook. That was a while back. I forgive you already, Tommy. Well, when I unfolded the note and I read it, my little heart went a little faster than it normally did. You had a question asking me if I wanted you to do my project for me. You suddenly remember that same night you gave Skylar the note. It was the same night you didn't sleep at all. And... That's when I knew for sure I liked you a lot. But I also felt really bad for saying yes, so I'm sorry I made you do that. You would tell Skylar she didn't make you do anything. But when I was the next day, you handed me a small stack of papers. You looked really tired. You tell Skylar that you would have forgiven her already if it weren't for the fact that you asked to do it for her. I know you asked to do it, but I'm mostly sorry I said yes. Anyways, I remember another time the second year of high school and the staff had announced the people in charge of the yearbook would be coming around for a... Well, yearbook photos. That was also the day when my washer and dryer weren't working, so I came into school in the same clothes on the day I wore before. Do you remember you were the one who destroyed the window curtains on the picture day? Which is also the day you got into tension with Skylar. <laughs> you literally ran up to me after you heard I didn't have any clothes for the photo. Then you asked me if you wanted to make one right then and there. You told Skylar you may have been a little bit too excited to help you that day. Yeah, I could tell. Because right when I said yes, you pulled a sewing kit out of your bag and literally tore off the curtains from the wall and left the teacher's room. I was shocked at first, then I saw your... I saw you start sewing and I felt warm inside. Like I just wanted to give you one big hug. And once you finished and gave me the project, which is a shirt piece and that somehow fit me perfectly, I flushed a little. So I ran into the bathroom to change and got my picture taken after. You tell Skylar the only time we got to see her in the dress piece was in the yearbook. Oh, I'm sorry. I was too shy to show everyone. But once the teacher realized what she did, she put both of us in detention, but I don't even know why I got detention. You remind Skylar that she pushed you into the desk before she ran to change, hence why she was in detention. Oh, that's why I got detention that day. Yeah, it was really awkward during that time. I remember once the teacher left the room for a few minutes, I wrote a note and passed it to you. You remember that once you opened the note and read it, you got really scared and curious. Yeah, I did tell you not to go behind the building when school was over. It was a little embarrassing because of what I did when you actually got there. I didn't expect you to be there. I remember I told you I wanted to thank you for the dress, and I pulled out the classic, No girl will ever like you, so think of this, think of this hug as a rare thing card. You can tell Skylar has been watching the shows you watch and has already learned from them, despite only living together for about two weeks now. But you hugged me, and it felt so good. I wanted to just hold on forever, but... I let go after a few seconds. Which brings me to my most recent and last one. The time you came up to me when I was crying. I really do appreciate you doing that. I just want to let you know how thankful I am for bringing me here where I am right now. It really means a lot to me. If it's okay with you, can we stay like this for a bit? I want you to know that I'm still thankful for everything you've done for me. But why did you do all this even though I kept being mean to you all those times? You tell Skylar because she's the only girl you liked and you wanted to help her whenever she needed it. Honey. Skylar begins to tear up and starts crying into your chest. 
Thank you. Skylar finished crying into your chest and looks back up at you. I'm so sorry for being like this. Are you sure it's okay? If you say so. You asked Skylar the question from earlier. Oh, you were talking about video games, aren't you? Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. I... I didn't realize that. But to your question... No, not really. I haven't really played video games before. You grab Skylar's hand and take her to your bedroom. Why are you taking me in here? You wanna play something? Like what? A video game? I don't really know how. You'll teach me? Really? Well, I'm kind of excited now. You turn on your computer and open up Minecraft. Huh? What are you... Oh! <laughs> I think I've heard of that game before. Isn't that the one where it's kind of like a survival game? Yeah. Well, I think this will be fun. It's a new experience, and uh, I'm more than happy. So, how do I play? I put my fingers on WASD. Okay, and so now what? I move the mouse over the play game button. And I press Green New World. Okay, load it in. Oh, it's so blocky. Is it supposed to load in this low? Wait, what do you mean you haven't turned on any shaders? What are those? Whatever. Just tell me how to play, honey. This looks extremely fun. You start to explain the game and how to play to Skylar. There's a lot of stuff I need to do and... Well, do you think you can watch me play for the rest of the day? Great. So, how do I start? I'm so... what? I'm supposed to punch this tree? Really? Come on, they couldn't make anything better? Huh. I got this thing called oak wood. Am I supposed to have that, honey? A crafting table? Slow down, slow down! You're confusing me! Press E, okay. And put these four blocks right- Oh! Well, that's weird. That wouldn't happen in real life. That's so silly. Scatter starts to play the game with a better understanding of what to do. Before you know it, the sun has already gone down, in-game and in real life. Hmm... Honey, I think I found diamonds. I know, use an iron pickaxe. Inconvenient creeper. Skylar jumps out of the chair and clings to you. I'm scared now, why didn't you tell me that would happen? Just... Whatever. Doesn't matter. Let me stay like this for a bit. Skylar nearly falls asleep as she holds on to you. You snap out of it with another question. Mia, yeah, I do have work tomorrow. Why do you ask? You want to go tomorrow? Why? You want me to be your waiter. Wait, Come on, you have to be kidding me. Your waiter? At my job. You don't hate me, do you? What? What do you want? You want to see me in maid? <laughs> maid mode? You know, I could do that now if you... No, 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 no. I, 
I can wear the dress for you if you like. Sorry. Like you said, whenever I'm in maiden mode, I don't tend to be different. Which is why my voice can't stay the same right now. I'm so in... So used to it. It's so weird. I think I'm becoming softer. <sighs> Taylor walks out of the bedroom to change it to her maid outfit. But... She accidentally grabbed her work friend's outfit instead of hers. Oh. No, no, no. He's gonna be sad that I don't have my outfit. Huh. Maybe he wants this one instead. Skylar changes into her friend's outfit and gets into character, walks back to the bedroom. Skylar walks in the room wearing cat ears, a tail, and little gloves, and little cat paws too, but she <laughs> still had her other clothes on from before. Hello, sir. How may I assist you today? Oh? Why do you look surprised, sir? You weren't expecting this, were you? Well, this is what you're getting, sir. What would you like for me to do for you? You want an exact amount of seven head pats? I believe I can do that. Skylar lifts up her hand and begins to pat you. Pat, 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 pat. Would you like anything else? You want to go to bed now? Well, follow me. I'll walk you to the bed. Skylar grabs your hand and leads you to your bed. You may get in the bed now. You get in the bed and Skylar lays next to you. I don't think I can go any further than this, sir. Because I can't wrinkle this outfit, and I have to go to work. I apologize. Please have a great night. 